okay we were discussing software defined networks so before uh, that we have discussed that what are the limitation of per router control architecture so software defined networks basically first of all it has a generalized flow generalized flow base forwarding okay so we have already discussed it that in the sdn uh, basically the flow that uh, the uh, a flow is forwarded a pattern is defined not only based on destination ip address but also using the uh, 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 the make layer the transport layer and make the other transport layer and the uh, protocol okay so we have already discussed it so let me uh, show you that as as you know that a generalized forwarding in sdn what does it mean that in uh, sdn a forwarding table it contain a flow table it has header okay and this header it is basically it can be it can consist of port switch number vlan id mac source mac destination ethernet type ip source ip destination ip protocol tcp source port and tcp destination port so we have already discussed it okay so this is the first advantage of hdn okay so the first advantage of hdn is that that it is using generalized flow based forwarding okay second the feature or the unique feature of hdn is that that hdn separates the data plane and control plane the data plane it is maintained within each router and control plane is separated from the routers okay so the control plane is separated from each router and control plane is implemented centralizedly in a server it is okay so this is uh, the control plane it is implemented in a server in a laptop okay so this is implemented centralizedly okay so this centralized control plane is implemented in a server and this is called controller okay so this centralized control plane or controller it computes the forwarding path for each and every router okay so this is the another uh, uh, another uh, feature so basically hdn it has generalized flow based forwarding hdn separates data plane and control plane the data plane is maintained within each router and control plane is separated from each router and control plane is implemented centralizedly remotely at a server and that server is called controller okay so this is the hdn and further the hdn control plane above hdn control plane we have hdn applications actually the users the user it controls the our configure or it control or it program the control plane and subsequently the data plane by using these programs okay so the this control plane it is like window operating system okay and this is actually the hardware okay so these are actually the pro programs okay so the users it basically control the working of these routers okay by specifying its behavior here through applications but these application they run on the controller okay so the requirements are the uh, of, 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 from the user uh, basically these uh, we can uh, get the uh, so the requirements from the user through applications okay so these application it translate the uh, requirements from the network users to the uh, controller uh, format and then controller implements those requirements on the routers okay so we will also discuss it further so let me explain to you uh, uh, the working of hdn through an example scenario okay suppose that we have hdn switches 
switch number one switch two switch three and so on okay and this is the controller okay so when switches are each switch is directly connected to the controller okay so when each switch is directly connected to the controller so each switch it basically sends the uh, its link state information to the controller okay so you can see that each switch is connected directly to the controller and each switch periodically it sends the uh, let's suppose it sends the its link state information to the controller okay so it means that the controller when it controller receives the link state information from each switch from switch 1 switch 2 switch 3 switch 4 and switch 5 so you can see the controller can have the global view of the whole network okay so the controller have can construct the topology of whole network okay moreover the the user the network administrator it specified the policies at controller for example if it want that the student should access the facebook or not so all these requirements they are specified here at the controller okay so you can see that when the network is configured what does it mean that hosts are attached to the switches the switches are attached to the each other and the switches are also attached to the controller so when they, when these switches and controller they are switched on so they start operation when they start operation so each switch will sense its link state information to the controller so the controller has the whole network topology okay you can see that the forwarding table at each switch it is initially empty there is no entry it is empty source means source ip address suppose dst means destination ip address act means action and two means time suppose it is the time we will explain it okay now initially the forwarding table or the flow table they are empty okay so suppose that this host it wants to send a packet and the packet is to be sent to destination 10.003 so this is basically host c this is basically host c okay so the this this host it will forward the packet to the switch okay so this is the it is forwarded to the switch so when switch receives this packet so switch will examine the header field in the packet so the header field in the packet is suppose source address is this and destination address is this so the switch one it will look this header field in its forwarding table since the forwarding table is empty there is no entry so it means that the switch it doesn't have any knowledge any information about this packet so the switch will ask the controller switch will ask the controller that i have the switch one will ask the controller that the switch one that i have received i have received this packet and i i don't have the entry so what should i do with this uh, packet okay it means that the switch one is asking the controller to compute the path for this packet okay so basically the switch one it will forward this packet to the controller why because the, uh, for this packet there is no entry in the forwarding table because the forwarding table is empty okay so since the controller it has the whole network topology okay so it will basically based on this topology it computes the path okay suppose the path is that that the packet should be forwarded from switch 1 to switch 2 and from switch 2 to switch 3 okay this is the path okay so the controller will install this path in these switches not in other switches it will be installed only in the concerned switches okay so since the controller is directly connected to each switch so controller will install the path in switch 1 and switch 2 and switch 3 directly so you can see so the controller it will install this path in switch 1 switch 2 and switch 3 okay so how it is installed you can see it this is installed that when a, when a packet from with source address this and destination is this is received at switch 1 so it should be forwarded to port number 3 so this is port number 3 so it is forwarded to 
switch to when it is forwarded to switch to so in switch to already we the controller has installed the path the this is called flow rule this is called flow rule so the path is installed that when we when so when switch to receive this packet so the path is already installed so according to this path the packet will be forwarded to port number so it will be forwarded to port number two. So it will be forwarded by switch two to switch three, and switch three also will have the path. So it will be forwarded to the port number two, and when port number two there is the destination address. So at the destination machine, the packet will be received. Okay. So the controller it install the path in in the switch one, switch two, and switch three. Okay. So now the uh, the switch one it forwards the packet. Okay. When the packet is forwarded, so it is reached to switch two, and switch two also have the path because it is installed by the controller. So it will be forwarded on this path, and switch three when it receives the packet, so it also have the path. So it will be forwarded to on this path. Okay. So you can see that the packet is received here at the destination. So this is how the controller installed the path in the switches. Okay, in the SDN switches, you can see that this is two. Two means thirty seconds. What does it mean? That the time of this entry is thirty second. So after thirty second, this entry will be, this entry will be discarded. Okay, it will be discarded. Okay. So since its time is thirty second, so suppose that host B, host A, suppose the host A, it sends another packet. It sends another packet. So host A is sending another packet from host A to host C. So you can see that host A will forward that packet to the switch one. When switch one receives this packet, so this time the path is already installed here. For this packet, the path is already present in the forwarding table. So this time the packet will be directly forwarded. The packet will not be move, will not be passed on to controller. The packet will not be transferred to the controller because the path is already present. So that's why when controller install a path, when controller computes a path, then the path is installed in the forwarding table. And when the path is installed, it has a time. So it is valid for this time. So within this 30 second, if more packets are received, then these subsequent packet they will not be forwarded to controller, but they will be directly forwarded. So it basically reduce the load over the controller. The controller should not compute the path for each packet. The controller should compute the path for the first packet of a flow. And if the same packet is received, if the uh, if packet number two, three, four are received from the same source and for the, for the same destination, then the path will be present. So this the, this packet, subsequent packet, they will not be transmitted to the controller. Okay. So this is the advantage. Similarly, you can see that the switch one forwards this packet directly to the switch two, and when switch two receives this packet, this also the path is present in its forwarding table. Okay, so it will forward the according to this uh, entry, so it will be forwarded to switch number three. Okay, the switch number three it is also forwarding to the destination. Okay, so this is an example that how is done. Uh, uh, network uh, that how the path is computed and how the packet is forwarded okay now we are going to discuss that hdn perspective so you can see that first of all the hdn it separates the data plane and control plane okay the data plane it is maintained in the switches so data plane so the switches only have data plane switches only have data plane so what does it mean it means the switches will become faster because the switch only perform the data plane functionality the control plane and management plane it is separated from the controller so the, 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 the control plane and management plane it is separated from the switches so the switches have only one functionality that is the data plane that is forwarding so therefore it will be it will become faster if a person does three jobs and if a person does one job so if a person does one job then it then it can uh, do easily if a person does three jobs three types of job then it will it will be 
slow okay so in similar way here the switch is it does only data plane functionality that is it only does forwarding so it its job it becomes faster simple another that the data plane switch they become simple because the control plane and management functionality they are not done at the switches so the switches become very simple they become simple so their job is just forwarding okay the commodity switch is implementing generalized data plane forwarding so we have already discussed that this that the therefore we implement the generalized data plane forwarding okay so the second is that it is implemented in hardware so the data we we have already discussed that in the uh, switches these functionality are implemented in hardware switch flow table it is computed and installed by routers okay so you can see that each switch it has a flow table it has a flow table and this flow table it is computed by controller so the, the controller computes the path the controller it basically compute the path you can see that controller computes the path and then control install that part in the switches okay so you can see that uh, the switch flow table that is the forwarding table in each switch it is computed and installed by the controller so now the data plane and control plane it has to communicate with each other why because each switch is attached to the controller so each switch sends the uh, what each switch it sends the uh, link state information to the, the controller similarly when a switch receives a packet and that packet is and that packet uh, doesn't have matching entry in the forwarding table then the switch forwards that packet to the controller so similarly when the controller computes the path so it install the path in the at the switches therefore for switch to control the communication we need a protocol we need a protocol okay so the api for table based switch control for example we have open flow a protocol okay that is uh, this is api this is the protocol that is used for the communication between controller and data plane okay so the one of the api is called open flow protocol this is a protocol like for example we have tcp protocol udp http dns so similarly this is the open flow protocol which is used for the communication between data plane and controller okay that is between the switch and controller for communication from switch to controller and from com controller to switch so it basically define so similarly like for example in http protocol we have what type of messages can be sent and what type of responses can be sent similarly the open flow also specify that what kind of messages can be sent what kind of action can be performed okay so this all these things they are defined in the open flow specification so we have the protocol for communicating with the controller and for this purpose we are using open flow from switches to controller and from controller to switches so the same protocol open flow protocol is used okay now th this is the generalized base forwarding as we have discussed that the switch table it is basically generalized data plane forwarding okay so we have already discussed that a switch it has a flow table and this flow table it basically is not only destination based but it is it, it can be also based on ip source ip protocol make destination make source etc okay and the action it, they can be not only forwarding but there are different types of action uh, support like forwarding encapsulation drop send to uh, uh, normal processing and modify so we have already discussed it in the chapter number four okay now we are going to discuss the sdn architecture from controller point of view okay so basically what does controller uh, do so controller basically it maintain network state information okay as we have discussed that each switch uh, as we have discussed that each switch it is correct it is directly connected to the controller and each switch periodically sends the uh, 
links the information to the controller so at the, at the controller we have the topology okay like we have discussed if you re, if you remember it so we have discussed it for example here you can see that each switch is sending directly its selected information to the controller so the controller have the whole network topology the whole network view okay okay second is that it uh, the controller interacts with the network control application okay so here the controller is interacting with the data plane by using this is called southbound api for example open flow protocol is used for communication between data plane and controller similarly as i have discussed to you that this controller it is an operating system okay so if for example they are using for uh, communication uh, uh, a protocol open flow protocol okay so that open flow protocol is also very generic one this protocol is also generic one okay so if you do remember like for example this way okay so it is also like for example if you uh, remember it so we have discussed it like for example it is using like ip source ip destination okay so it is very difficult to remember okay so therefore the hdn basically there are different type of applications okay uh, we will discuss it next also so there are different type of application so the network administrator it basically control the network through these applications by specifying then its requirements his, his or her requirements through using these application for example we are using internet so we are using internet by using skype so skype is the application and the skype application is running on the window suppose so windows in windows is operating system so basically the skype through skype the user can access the internet okay so the window it it, it basically uh, runs the skype application requirements on the hardware so similarly the controller here it can be like window operating system and these application can be like skype etc okay so so here the controller have not so the controller has to interact with the data plane okay using southbound api okay for this purpose the southbound api one of the southbound api is open flow protocol similarly the controller it has to interact with the applications and through these application the user the network administrator it specify its requirement so the so the uh, controller it communicate with the applications with the with the network ap application through using not bound api so the hdn controller it maintain network state information and interact with the network control application about for example why not bound api it it interacts with the network switches also the hdn controller it interacts with the switches by using southbound api normally as we have discussed that the controller it is implemented remotely it can be implemented on a, on a server okay but what what is the main disadvantage of hdn for example this server it for example it is crashed for example this server is crashed so this controller is a software it is a operating system it is running on this hardware if this hardware is crashed what will happen this controller if the controller is is fail then the whole network it will fail okay so therefore we use distributed system for fault tolerance and scalability distributed system means for example we run the controller on three machines so okay if one machine is fail then other two two, two machine they can be workable okay so we can have distributed system like for example we can have more than two machines okay and so on okay similarly for example the hdn controller it is a huge application it may not be uh, enough to run on a single server so we may use three or four servers okay so therefore the hdn controller it is basically run on the multiple uh, 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 distributed system okay so the hdn controller what is hdn controller so hdn controller it maintain the network state information that is each switch each switch is connected to the controller and each switch is sending its link state information to the controller so the controller has the whole network state the whole network view 
second the hdn control it interacts with the hdn control application why not bound api and through these application the user specify his or her requirements okay similarly the hdn control it interacts with the network switches with network switches by using southbound api so one of the southbound api is openflow and second is that the hd the the hdn controller it is implemented on a single machine and a single server so if a server fails it is crashed then the whole network will be crashed so therefore we use multiple system multiple servers to okay and the hdn controller is run on the multiple servers if one server is crashed then the other two will be available okay now we are going to discuss the hdn third uh, uh, perspective and that is called control applications okay and this is actually we know that brain of controller it implements the control function using you can see that i have already discussed it that this is hdn controller it is communicating with the applications with the uh, hdn controller it is communicating with the switches and this for this purpose they are using the southbound api and one of the southbound api is openflow protocol okay and this protocol it is basically low level commands for example you can see for for the controller to switches communication we use a southbound api and one of the southbound api is called openflow protocol and openflow protocol you can see that these are the commands are this the working it can be specified by using port number, make source address, make destination, Ethernet, IP source, IP destination. For example, like this one. So remembering the these things like in numeric values, it is very very difficult. For example, we cannot remember the phone number, mobile number of each and every person, and remembering the names, it is easy. So the open flow, it basically used these low level IP addresses, source addresses to specify the working of switches. Okay, but you can see that these are low level commands. These are difficult to remember by the user. This can be, you can see that, for example, if one wants to write program in assembly language, so it is very, very difficult. So this specifying the network behavior using open flow protocol so this is like assembly language this is like assembly language so another option is that that we can specify this this functionality by using abstraction this is called at high level for example you see that if the source address is server and the destination is private then drop it here also this this same functionality it can be used so this is very understandable this is understandable like for example if one writes the program in assembly language so assembly language is equivalent to open flow protocol and one is writing the program using c++ or java language so it is much easier so to find for example the cosine r to for, for angle uh, for, for, for example in assembly language so you will write 1000 line program but in java you can just use one line okay it is much easy so you can see that this is easy for users and this is easy for devices so what we have like for example here similar to the java language we also specify the network requirements using this higher level abstraction okay and this is done by specifying using applications okay so actually you can see that the user specify its requirements its operation using these higher level levels higher level abstraction but this cannot be understood by the hdn switches this cannot be understood by the hdn switches this cannot be understood by hdn controller why because the hdn controller it is using open flow it is using these commands low level commands so what we should do so we have a not bound api we have a not bound api and what does it do basically it specify the requirements from the user that the user specify his or her requirements using this higher level abstraction 
so the north bound it's basically translate this higher level abstraction to the open flow commands through the open flow commands and then the hdn controller can use these open flow commands to configure the working of the data plane the switches okay so you can see that the uh, the uh, the hdn switches they are using open flow low level commands and the user they are specifying the their requirements by using higher level abstraction okay so we need a not bound api that translate the application requirements into the open flow equivalent commands okay so basically this is the brain of control why because the user it control it specify its requirements the operation requirements configuration each and everything is specified by user by using this high level abstraction through this application and then this not bound api it basically translate this high level abstraction to the open flow commands because the hdn controller and the switches they only understand open flow low level commands like for example the computer machine it's, it's only understand binary machine language it doesn't understand c++ java so what we do so this so we write the program in java we write program in java then we, we then we compile java into assembly language then assembly language is translated into machine language and then it is run on the machine so similarly here the user requirements for it are specified by using this application through this abstraction high level abstraction but this program the abstraction these requirements specified by this application they are translated through not bound api into open flow commands so this is actually the machine language the the uh, the assembly language okay so we can have unbundled so we have different types of applications and these application they are normally developed by third party okay okay so we have uh, uh, we have a variety of application that are developed by several people okay so we have to translate the higher level abstraction into the low level commands so we have to translate the high level abstraction into low level open flow command so this is done by using not bound api now what are the components of an hdn controller okay let's talk so hdn controller as we know that the hdn controller first job is that that it communicates with the switches it communicates with the switches so it communicates with the switches by using open flow command or another uh, api so this is called uh, uh, southbound api okay like we have discussed okay that uh, the hdn controller it communicates with the switches using southbound api and open flow is one of the southbound api okay so so the first thing that is present here is the communication to and from the control devices so this communication it is basically that uh, if for example it can be used open flow protocol okay so so using this uh, communication like for example open flow protocol the hdn controller can get to know that what are the switches available what each switch it sends its link state information so the hdn controller can have the link state information of all switches and from using this uh, the link state information of all switches the controller it can have the link state information so it maintain the link state information that which switch has which neighbors it has the host information for example which host is attached to which switch it has it has the switch information that which switch is attached to which switch etc so what is the bandwidth of each link what kind of traffic is moving on each link etc so all these type of information they are get through open flow protocol and then they are stored here with the hdn control okay similarly the hdn controller it also have not bound api why this not because there are the user applications the user actually access the hdn controller through using this application for example we run we uh, we access the internet through using application like skype etc etc okay so basically there is 
the first thing that is present in the SDN controller is the communication layer for communication between data plane and controller. So OpenFlow is one of the API. Second date when the open when the SDN controller it gets the information from the data plane so it build up network wide state management layer that state of networks links switches services all these information they are stored by the SDN controller here okay and third thing is that infrastructure layer to control network application so we have here an interface layer okay this because the user the network administrator accesses the SDN control through using these applications okay so there is a API or interface that can they change the user requirements to the air controller required format okay now we are going to discuss an open flow protocol okay open flow protocol is what basically we have discussed and we have explained if you do remember so we have explained that when each in SDN each switch is connected to the controller okay so basically the open flow is one of the protocol that is used for the communication between SDN switch and SDN controller so basically the open flow protocol it operates between controller and switch it operates between it is used for communication between switch and controller so when a switch is connected to the SDN controller okay so basically the open flow it is an application layer protocol it is an application layer protocol like HTTP at the transport layer it is using TCP at the transport layer it is using TCP so the TCP is used to exchange the messages first when the switch wants to connect with the uh, controller so it basically used TCP to first build up the connection logical connection when the logical connection is established then the open flow messages are exchanged okay and they can use encryption SSL algorithm for security reason to for authentication that this switch and controller they want to authenticate each other so they may use the encryption algorithm may they may use the SSL algorithm okay basically we when the SDN switch is connected to the SDN controller when they are connected then they exchange the information the, ex the information can be what for, uh, that we have discussed that each switch it sends its link state information to the controller similarly when the controller computes the path it is installed in each switch similarly when a switch receives the a packet and the packet doesn't have entry matching entry in the in the in the forwarding table that packet is also sent to the controller so there are different types of messages exchanged between the switch and controller but these messages can be divided into three types controller to switch controller to switch and it from and from switch to controller and similarly some are symmetric or miscellaneous so these are some type of messages that are sent from controller to switch for example feature this is one type of message these, these are the messages that are sent from controller to switch the controller queries the switch feature okay when the controller want to get the features of a switch so it sends a switcher switch query so when the switch receives the switch query so switch uh, uh, sends the required information in the switch response switch, uh, switch uh, feature response message similarly configure the controller can queries or sets the switch configuration parameters similarly by using the configure message it, it is used to configure the switch are to get the configuration values from the switch similarly modified state it is used to add to delete or to modify the flow entries that entries in the in the forwarding table in the flow table okay so modified state it is these are this type of message this type of messages are used to add delete or modify the flow entries in the open flow table packet out the controller can send this packet out of the specific uh, uh, switchboard they, this is used this is a command the controller sends okay that the packet should be forwarded on this link okay so this is a command similarly the switch also sends messages to the 
controller so the messages that can be sent from the controller from the switch to controller these are three types one is packet end when a switch receives a packet and there is no entry for the date packet in the forwarding table then this packet is forwarded to the controller packet end means transfer the packet and it's controlled to controller the c packet out message from the controller so when this is received so the controller computes the path and then controller install the path and then instruct also that this message should be forwarded to this switch okay so we have already discussed it flow removed so the uh, the switch one when the sw when the flow entry is time out for example you can see it here okay okay you can see that for example each flow entry it has a time if this time is out then this flow will be removed so when this flow is removed then switch will send the message or for example this flow table it becomes full and next entry is to be added so the next edit in entry cannot be added one entry should be replaced so when the entry is removed from that uh, from a table then the message is sent to the controller okay So flow removed means when the flow table entry is deleted at the switch, then the switch sends the uh, message to the controller. Port status it informs the controller of change on a port. So this message is sent. Okay. So we have different types of messages. Okay. So we have discussed that uh, that uh, we have discussed that the open flow messages they are basically the SDN controller and the SDN switches they communicate with each other using open flow messages but these open flow messages they are like binary language they are like like, like assembly language that we have discussed so the open flow message they are in this format in numeric values they are commands low level commands they are like assembly language okay so up so the user for user it is very difficult to use these commands to in, to configure or to operate the network so for user the higher level abstraction the names are easy to remember and it, okay similarly for example the user it is easy to develop program in java language then assembly language so this is like java language and this is like the open flow is like assembly language so we are fortunate that, that we have a similar like for example java language we also have uh, uh, we we are fortunate that the network operator don't write programs which is by using open flow messages by using an open flow messages that come low level commands like assembly language so so instead they use high level abstraction like for example we develop programs using java language high level language similarly we have high level abstraction here for writing the control programs for the controller okay for example, this is a one type of polythene is a language. This is a language. You can see that it is much easier. Here we declare the variables and then we declare the rules that this server is not allowed to use the private. So specifying the requirements using this higher level abstraction, it is much easier and it is understandable. Okay. So it increases the productivity of the network operator, programmer, as well as it is simple to debug. Okay. So there are different types of SDN programming languages. Okay, for example, we have discussed that the open flow commands, they are open flow commands, they are like assembly language. So it is difficult to write. And uh, so we have uh, ab higher abstraction languages like, for example, we have Java. Okay, so there are, there are different types of languages available. So the high level languages that are available in SDN, so there can be categorized into two types one is called domain specific language one is called general purpose language general purpose language means that they are using python and java these high level language that are used to develop other programs these languages can also be used to develop the sdn programs so there are different uh, network uh, sdn controller that provides to write the program using these general purpose language so what is its advantage is advantage is that, that the user is most of the user they are familiar with these type of languages okay and some we have specific domain specific language like for example pyretic frenetic so the normally the user they are not familiar with pyretic language for example no one of you can uh, uh, no one of you uh, can uh, could hear could hear the 
Pyratic language, but all of you know about Python and Java. So, okay, so these languages they are efficient, okay, but they are difficult because if one wants to you to develop the instant pro program using Pyratic language, so the first the user has to learn Pyratic language, okay, so it requires time, okay, so therefore it is very difficult. So now we are going to discuss some of the example scenario okay for interaction of is in uh, control and data plane example so you can see that in this example suppose this is switch number one switch one switch two and this is the controller okay so suppose s1 switch one it experience link failure so when a link is failed for example this link is failed if this link is failed this port will become down so through data link layer the switch one will detect that this link is failed so when this is occurred so the switch one has to in inform the controller and how it is informed by using open flow message by using open flow message the s1 will inform the controller that this link is failed that this port is down so when the sdn controller it receives the open flow message that the this link is down so it will update its link state information it will update the switch information that now this switch one and switch two they are not connected this link is now removed okay so what it will do okay for example if we are using digester routing protocol for computing the shortest path from source one to switch two so we have to again use the digest algorithm because this link is now failed so now the topology is changed so we have to recompute the paths we have to recompute the path so digesta routing algorithm is a, a, a application it has previously registered to be called whenever the link state is changed so it is called so it will be called to recompute the path from all switches to all switches okay when the new path is the computer so the digital routing algorithm it will access the network graph here yeah. why because the network graph it will have that the, this link is failed so this graph will be reconstructed okay so it will uh, sync the fifth step is that that uh, it will link state routing application it, it interact with the flow table so when the new path is computed so it will have to uh, through open so it so this uh, will inform the uh, it, it will uh, install the new paths in the switches okay and this uh, path will be installed by using the open flow commands okay so the controller uses the open flow to install the new tables in the switches okay the controller needs the open flow messages to install the path in the switches the new path in the switches okay so we have different types of controller available like for example we have different types of operating system available for machines for pcs for laptop for example we have windows linux uh, unix uh, and uh, mac etc so similarly for sdn controller we have different types of controller available one of them is odl open daylight controller i think it is one of the efficient uh, controller available okay so there are different version of odl the, so one of them is OD, ODL lithium controller. I have installed ODL oxygen controller in in my lab. So this is the structure. So the network application may be contained within or is to be external to the SDN controller. So the application they can be contained within the uh, controller. It can be uh, outside. Okay. So we have service abstraction layer that interconnects the internal and external application services okay and it suppose open flow 1.0 also the oxygen was odl oxygen it can support open flow 1.3 as well okay similarly we have another type of controller this is called onas controller okay so the control application they are separate from the controller and the intent are the application they uh, high level application services okay or it considerable emphasis on the distributed core 
service reliability application performance etc okay so one of the thing that i would like to mention about the odl so it is the odl it's one of the best feature is that that it is java based okay so writing the program using java i think it will be much easy for you okay so similarly on us similarly we have different types of other uh, controller like pox uh, that is used but the pox it cannot be used with the real routers or switches but these on us and the odl they can be used directly with the current uh, switches okay but the uh, like for example the switches of uh, cisco hp etc so one thing that you should remember that whenever you want to buy a switch so there should be uh, written that whether it support the open flow is done or not okay so if it is supported in which version of open flow is supported so you have to then think about that whether it is compatible with the odl uh, lithium version or with the odl other versions okay so i would like to uh, i would like to mention to you some more interesting uh, facts that first of all there, there is a consortium there is a consortium which is called open network foundation please visit it okay please visit it so you can find all relevant information there for example the first the people they were doing a ccna mcsc courses okay but nowadays the uh, based on sdn technology it has been adopted by various organizations so the sdn now nowadays the open flow certification they are done okay so similarly the google uh, they uh, uh, started they deployed the uh, the sdn in their data center and it took eight years okay so the hdn is so promising technology that even it has been adopted by big companies like facebook google etc and nowadays most of the vendors they are also their switches and their routers they are supporting the their uh, hdn technology okay so you have to uh, 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 you have to learn about it okay so we are discussing we have discussed several uh, uh, the advantages of SDN, but uh, you should also note that the SDNs have some challenges. They have some challenges, and these challenges are, for example, hardening the control plane. Okay, for example, there is the issue of reliability. If the controller is fair, then the whole network will be fair. Okay. Similarly, if the controller is a single controller, if the controller is hijacked, if controller is hijacked, the whole network will be hijacked. Okay, so these are the issues that are available in the uh, SDN uh, uh, architecture. Okay, so hardening the control pane, dependable, reliable, performance, scalable, secure distributed system. So robustness to failure. For example, if the controller is failed, the whole network will be fair. Okay, similarly, if the controller is hijacked, okay, someone hijacked the uh, controller, so it means that the whole network is hijacked. Okay, similarly, there are different uh, uh, the uh, uh, protocols for example for real time ultra reliable ultra secure uh, we have different protocols so those protocol those applications they should be supported by sdn okay so a lot of the work has been going on and second is that the sdn it, this technology was uh, started uh, for the small scale okay but nowadays but in the internet it is a wide uh, area network so uh, so the how to use centralizing for internet scaling for uh, for uh, like for example if we uh, the sdn the controller it can only support a small network okay but if we have a big network for example like internet level network so how the single controller how the centralized architecture it will control the whole network so these are some challenges okay so we have discussed the SDN control plan and next we would like to uh, discuss the ICMP protocol, okay?